Hi and welcome. During the next few minutes I'd like to show you how to create a simple shrub. Um, for example, uh, like the one you can see here on the screen. We'll do that with XFROG 3.5. You can see the branching structure of this shrub. Several trunks are emerging uh, from the base right here. We will try to replicate um, this look and this behavior. To do so, um, you would have uh, several options. First, I'll delete um, the shrub. You could use a feeball, for example. Just drag and drop onto the root camera. And uh, then use the feeball to, well, create several uh, trunks. The problem, I'll adjust the fan so that it looks a little bit more realistic and reduce the number. The problem um, is when you choose to do it with uh, the fee ball, um, all trunks will look exactly the same. The fee ball does not offer any controls um, to, um, well, adjust the density, to adjust the node growth, for example. Um, it's more um, well related to create patterns for blossoms, for example. Petals arranged around the center um, comes to mind. Um, so we'll t take another approach um, to create um, um, uh, several trunks emerging from the base. Um, to do so, we'll drag another tree component um, to the root camera. We can um, uh, delete this part. Uh, rename this new tree to base. This will be our base. I'll adjust um, the shape because the thickness is passed on to the trunks later on. And of course um, this has to be much shorter so we are reducing the length to about, well, well let's, let's use two. We can adjust those settings later on. I'll go with the regular distribution later on. And we don't need that many child objects, so I'll reduce the number to 5. You'll see the effect later on when we add a child mm, component. So with the base object still selected, double-click another tree component or drag and drop. Now you can see that, um, um, well, we have a simple <laughs> brush-like structure. Uh, not really, but you can uh, see that we are getting closer to the look we want to achieve. So um, reselect the base object. First um, I'll work on the node angle parameter so that the um, child branches point more upwards. Something like this is okay. Then I'll select uh, the tree object rename it to trunk and then I'll adjust um, the shape to something similar to this. Also uh, we'll go to the primitive tab of the trunk and increase the number of points to about 9 so that we have a much smoother appearance. Now, actually, we can um, hide this uh, well base object. So select the base, go for uh, go to the primitive tab, change primitive type to none. And now you can see um, that uh, this object is invisible, uh, and you also can see that uh, the child trunks are hovering in the air, so we'll reduce the length. Let's try one. That's better. I think we could get away with this, but I'll reduce it even to 0 0.5. Here we go. I'll save this as uh, step 01 so that we can go back later on if we did a mistake. So now we can add uh, the first branching level to the trunk. 
I'll rename that one to branch one. Again, I'll work on the thickness uh, a little bit using a thickness curve similar to, similar to that one. And then go for the trunk. I like um, the child branches to be distributed more evenly and therefore I'll use a more um, 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 even curve. Then we have to work on the angle parameter. Uh, probably even a little bit steeper. Okay. Then I'll adjust the growth scale curve. So in the upper areas of the trunk, the branches, the child branches, um, receive less growth than uh, in uh, well the middle area. Fine. The only problem is um, that the child branches now are a little bit too long. So I'll select the branch one object and reduce the the length to about um, eleven. That's fine. And now select the base object. Again, we'll take a look at the um, uh, growth scale. Click Edit. And then we'll adjust the growth scale. So now um, um, the trunks grow much longer compared um, to before. I mean, this already looks almost like a shrub. Not really nice, but well. Good. So select the trunk object. Now we'll take a look at some other parameters. Um, for example, um, deviation or deviate. We'll increase this um, deviate parameter. And you'll notice that the trunk object starts to bend everywhere where it generates a child object. So this is a pretty typical behavior and you can replicate this with help of the deviate parameter. I'll activate that one also for our um, branch object. Okay. Good. Now select the trunk object go for the tropisms. We have phototropism. That parameter um, drags um, branching structures upwards. Um, you can see what happens in uh, the editor. The stronger the effect, the more um, the branching structure is bent upwards. Uh, the other way would be to use a gravitropism. With help of gravitropism, you can um, make uh, those trunk or branching structures um, bend downwards to the ground, um, well, depending on the strength of the gravitation. And actually, this is what I like to do. Um, we'll reduce the effect, shouldn't be too strong. And uh, I think the um, appearance is a little bit too broad. So I'll select the base object and use angle to push those um, branches more upwards. Good. That's fine. With the base object still selected, we can take a look at the dense parameter. Uh, it controls the density of um, uh, the child branching structures. So um, we'll adjust this a little bit. We'll do the same for the trunk object. You won't see much um, effect right now because uh, the branching uh, structure um, stops with the first branching level. And uh, the dense parameter um, controls how many 
objects the child object produces. So in this case, if I change the density um, curve of a trunk, this means the number of child objects generated by branch 1 is um, altered. So just to um, uh, show the effect more clearly, I'll add a lever object. With the trunk selected, change the density curve and you'll notice um, that the branch object now generates more leaves. This is especially helpful um, uh, when working with uh, growth scale um, curves because uh, the lower the growth scale the less um, leaves are generated by the branch um, and so you can counteract a little bit with the density curve. So for now we can remove the leaf object again, add another branch object and um, uh, rename it to branch 2. We'll reduce the length, select branch 1, change number of branches to about 8. Distribution curve could look like this. Then um, we'll work on the growth scale mainly. In the upper areas uh, the growth scale should be lower. And of course we also have to work on the angle parameter, parameter however. <laughs> Good. And um, I think I'll increase the length of this um, to about 9. Yeah, that's better. And um, then again we'll increase deviation a little bit. And those branches I'll let um, well, flow upwards. They are dragged by, by phototropism. Just a little bit, not too strong. Here we go. I think reduce the number of branches. Okay, so here we have a base shape and now we could start to add a leaf object. We'll create a simple uh, shrub, so I want to use a simple ge geometry for the leaves or for the leaf clusters. Add the leaf um, object to the branching level 2, go for the primitive tab and change the primitive type to square. So now a simple square is uh, generated. We can increase the scaling a little bit. I want the square to be non-square. <laughs> it should be a rectangular, so I'll increase the scale Z a little bit. I'm fine with that. And actually, we'll just add a texture to that leaf object. Go to the Material tab, Set Texture, Browse to the File, I use this simple leaf cluster and now you'll see that the um, texture doesn't fit on the leaf geometry. This is because um, the primitive is set to square and has a, re a resolution of 1. The scale V setting of UV is set to 5 though. Um, change that parameter to 1 and now it'll fit exactly onto the leaf geometry. So probably we'll increase the overall scale of this um, of this leaf cluster. First, I'll use, I think, about two. Yeah, that's better. And now I'll show you another way. Um, in this case, we're using the basic scale as um, well, basic scale, just as the name suggests. And then we go to the Primitive tab and 
reduce scale x right here and now you can see that um, we have the same effect compared to before we don't have a square but a rectangular we can make the effect more visible so that's probably probably the better way um, control the basic scale with uh, scale yz on the basic tab and then you can change uh, the ratio uh, with help of the primitive tab now go for the basic um, um, tab of the leaf component I like to adjust um, the alignment of the leaves you can see we have a phototropism right here X Y and Z axis Y axis should be fine if you now drag it all the way you can see that those are aligned um, but that effect is of course is strong if you wanted to drag them completely upwards you could set um, set this parameter to a Z axis but we'll go with Y axis and um, change the value to about um, 0 0.4 0 0.3 just that the um, alignment is a little bit less um, random and I think I'll even increase the scale of the cluster yeah that's better so now go for the trunk object switch to the materials tab click set and add um, a bitmap which is tiled along the trunk of geometry this shrub is uh, rather simple but actually um, often it's um, enough for background purpose so if, if you need uh, low poly um, shrubs for your scenes for your landscaping um, you could use an approach um, similar to that one you can see that we have a uh, shrub with a triangle count of about 17,000 so that's uh, fairly low now if you want the shrub to be um, closer to the camera um, you'll probably have to add um, a lot more detail and I'll show you some um, um, techniques to do so first I'll select the branch object and hide it together uh, with uh, the child object so you can see um, this is uh, our base with the trunk emerging uh, from the center point I think I'll increase this number to about six and then I like um, um, some um, trunks to grow more upwards so select the node angle curve add some control points you simply could increase the number of control points so that not everything is um, 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 affected by the changes right here now you can see you have a more um, or better control almost over a separate um, well child branches so now we have one growing almost straight upwards that's better now I'll um, unhide the branching I think the trunks generate too many um, branches so I'll reduce that value to about six or probably even to about five I like that better Now if you are going closer up you'll have to increase the number of primitive points for this branching level. I think we can leave it at the default uh, 3 for the other uh, branching levels. So now select the leaf and unhide branch 2. We could um, work on the tropism of uh, the branching level 1. I let those branches hang slightly downwards. 
Okay. And instead of directly adding the leaf clusters to the secondary branching level, we'll add another branching level. So simply drag a branch component onto the branch 2 object, reduce the number to about 6. Again, we have to work on those parameters like angle. We have to work on um, growth scale and uh, probably slightly adjust the density parameter. Um, then we have to reduce the length of this uh, third branching level. By the way, I'll rename that branching level to branch 3. So that's looking pretty good actually. Um, I'll adjust deviation a little bit of the third branching level. Also, I'll use a phototropism to slightly bend those branches upwards. And now we drag the leaf cluster onto the branching level 3, unhide it. And now we can scale it down. If you're getting closer, um, well, it looks a little bit strange because uh, oh, the leaf geometry is uh, pretty big compared to the rest of the structure. So I re reduced that to about 1.5. And now you can see um, that we got a pretty nice shrub. And still the poly count is okay. Um, we have about 40,000 triangles, so that's not too much. Especially nowadays uh, where you can use um, um, techniques like instancing in most uh, rendering applications. So now there's uh, still one uh, point or one problem I want um, um, to solve. When taking a close look in this area, you'll notice that all trunk and um, subsequent branching structures look, well, almost exactly the same. And this is because they are basically the same. Um, there are only slight differences because of uh, the different uh, growth angle or node angle. So they are uh, affected differently by gravitation and phototropism. But um, apart from that, they are looking all the same, which is, um, well, um, a little bit weird. To break up this um, um, extremely regular look, select the base and go for the node density parameter. You can see we have uh, the density curve. And um, this density curve controls how many branch 1 objects are generated by the trunk object. So now I want um, the outer um, 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 trunk objects to generate more child objects. The outer ones are controlled by the left area of this curve. So I'll drag uh, this point downwards and now you can see um, the density has increased. And now um, this trunk, for example, starts growing branches pretty low in this area. And the ones affected by the right part of the curve still start uh, with their first um, um, child objects in the upper areas right here. So now the shrub looks much better because uh, the center area looks um, um, much more realistic and it almost looks as if there were uh, different um, um, trunks uh, and not all um, creating the same amount of child objects. So these were the basic um, steps to create um, a simple brush-like structure inside XROC 3.5. We used a very short and invisible uh, tree component 
to um, arrange several trunks. Be sure that those link arrows are set to multiple if you want to um, create several child objects. We used node growth and uh, density or growth scale and dense um, to control the shape of our um, branching structure. The leaf component is used um, to create the clusters. Depending on your needs, you can work with uh, a square geometry to save some polygons. And it's also possible, of course, to use a much more detailed um, leaf cluster um, if you use the default leaf, for example. I'll just add it. Here you can can see the default leaf. I'm increasing the scale, which is controlled by a shape formula or uh, with the help of a spline object. And this leaf object is capable of uh, reacting to effects like gravitropism and phototropism. So it's possible to bend those leaf objects. But this, of course, um, increases the polygon count a lot. So you should do only, or you should only use um, 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 this real geometry leaf if, if you're getting really close. Um, in most cases, you should be fine um, uh, with uh, uh, choosing the primitive type square which creates a lot less polygons um, um, compared to the real geometry. Thanks for watching and have fun X-Frogging!